What's up, moviegoers? Welcome to the Markio Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony. In today's episode of the Markio Podcast, I'm talking about Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. The movie was released on January 12th, 1990, has a running time of 85 minutes, and grossed $5.7 million at the box office. Now, this third installment follows Leatherface and his cannibalistic family stalking a motorist couple in the back roads of Texas. Now, let me just say that it takes a while for me to get used to a genre of movies, especially in the franchise. But to me, to me, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, is the best movie in the original franchise of movies. I love the look of this. I love the feel of it. We see Leatherface as this hulking figure. He's much more, you know, scary looking than he is in the first and second one. And you can tell he's updated for the 90s standard of horror movies. And you could say that the chainsaw that he's wielding is so, so crazy huge and big that it's ridiculous that no chainsaw should be ever that big. But it's done so well. And the tagline for this movie is the most controversial horror film ever is finally here. So this movie skips the black comedy, quote unquote, dark humor that the second one had and reverts back to the original slasher horror feel to it, and it delivered on so many high-level notes. The killings are much more gruesome. Nothing was held back in this movie. The story is much more easier to follow. And a young Viggo Mortensen plays Edward Tex Sawyer. So he's basically the one telling Leatherface what to do, how to kill, and do certain things. And basically Leatherface is listening to him through this whole time. Now basically the film gained a certain amount of notoriety prior to its release due to the battle between New Line Cinema and the MPAA, which initially rated the film an X because of its graphic violence once again. So the three Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies got an X rating because of such graphic violence. It was the final film to receive this rating before being replaced X with an NC-17. So the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America, basically gave this movie an X but then replaced it with NC-17. So this was the last movie ever to receive an X rating. Now, uh, the director, Jeff Burr, cites issues involved that the studio was independent enough and that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 had been released unrelated and the film's grim and tone changed how this film looked. So basically the studio itself eventually trimmed the more graphic elements of this movie and Jeff Burr said that the film's negatives themselves were cut to maintain the film's release deadline. And so basically the trimmed version gained in uh, much more so a total of five minutes was cut in this movie to gain a rating approval by the Motion Picture Association of America. So if you see some plot holes or five minutes of plot holes in this movie, that's why. It's because the MPAA, the editing people, told the studio, or the studio told them to cut out the movie. Now here's a little thing you don't know about editing and how film works and how the studio has a say in it. Basically, if you make a movie like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 or Part 1 and Part 2, and you get that X rating, and you don't cut it down, basically what happens is that the studio comes in and edits the movie down so that it can get an approval rating and proper release by the Motion Picture Association of America, or the MPAA. So basically, by the end of the movie, what you shot and what you created is not the same anymore. Yeah, that's the interesting part about things. The only time you have a say in what you want in your film is if you're a big name film director like James Cameron, Steven Spielberg, names like that, uh, Christopher Nolan, Guillermo del Toro. You have everything you want in a film where you go in, you edit it, and you keep the movie that you want. But if you're a horror filmmaker, the studio comes in and cuts down certain plot elements of the movie, which is why if you see old horror movies from the 70s and 80s and you see something missing or a plot hole or an edit, That's just so weird. That's because the studio cut it down to make time and make approval so that the movie can get released on its release date. So that's just a little tidbit as to what happens with studio editing and the rating system for a movie that gets an X rating or an NC-17 rating. And sometimes um, the movie studio just lets it go and, you know, the movie is NC-17 and that's it. Now, the interesting thing about this movie is that it does have an alternate ending. And I don't want to say what the alternate ending is. 
because it definitely changes the how things are work and how certain aspects are done. But this leather face was more menacing, more crazy, and seeing a young Viggo Mortensen was great. And in 2003, New Line Home Entertainment released the film in both an R-rated and unrated versions on DVD. There's a lot of great commentary on those. And basically, if you're a fan of horror like me, you love those DVD backstories and that commentary because you get to see what happens. You get to see what the filmmakers did and, uh, you know, how they explain things and how certain things are done. Now, basically, when the movie was released, it got a crazy amount of negative reviews because of the violence, the aspect, how the film was shot, and the story nature that the film had. Let me say that the story and the movie has its flaws, but for me, it's so, so fucking entertaining that you have to check it out because it's one of my favorite slasher films because of just the way how everything's done. And it's fun. It's a fun watch. It's definitely different than 1 and 2. And you definitely notice that when you see this movie, you'll definitely notice how different it is than the first and the second one. And when you see a young Viggo Mortensen starring out in a horror movie, you'll get blown away by how he acts in this and how he still is one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood. So let me know in the comment section below what you think about Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Do you like it better than the first movie and the second movie combined? Do you think this movie was more graphic? And do you think that uh, leaving out the dark humor that the second one had and making this a horror slasher was better in a way. And have you seen the both the rated and unrated versions? And what did you think of it? And which one did you like more? Let me know in the comment section below about the questions I just asked. And be sure you tune into the next episode of the Markio Podcast, where I talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation. And be sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for new videos and new podcast episodes on the Markio Productions YouTube page. And follow Mark Your Productions on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And follow me, Anthony, your host on Instagram and Twitter at Mr. Filmstock. And follow the Mark Your Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'll leave a link to all the social media accounts in the description box below. You can check it out and follow along. All right, everyone, that does it for today's episode. I'm your host, Anthony. Thanks for tuning in. Uh-huh.